I would just like to take this moment to say, I got five on me. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. Greetings and welcome to The Fan Perspective. I'm your host Nathan Lyle and this is another edition of WNBA Weekly. So this was a very exciting weekend for me just in general, but specifically talking about WNBA games that were played over the weekend. First of all, on Friday, Della Downs sat out another game. She's having another recurrence of her Lyme disease. Uh, Ali Quigley came off the bench, led the team with 18 points. But Emma Mieselin led the Mystics with a double-double, 16 points, 11 rebounds, and she also led them in five steals. Washington and Chicago, the Sky, their fourth straight loss, so they've been knocked back down to 500. Uh, then four of the Lynx starters scored in double figures, led by 22 from Ray Whalen. But the Dream, all five of their starters scored in double figures. McCautry had 23. Uh, D'Souza and Little both had double doubles. And the Dream were able to hang on, grab a huge win. Then Tina Charles, she nearly had a triple double. She led the team with 25 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists. But Connecticut had three starters in double figures, led by 24 from Alex Bentley. Connecticut wins their third in a row. Then the Storm. They had five players in double figures, three different people tied to lead the team with 13 points apiece as they survive in order to secure the win. And then last, but definitely not least, you have one of the most exciting games of the season, for me at least. You know, Parker, she led the team with 18 points. Necker had a double-double, 17 points, 11 rebounds. Skylar Diggins, she led the way with 22 points, including the game winner, to give the Shock their third straight victory. Then on Saturday, you only had one game, but it was very exciting for me, being a Stars fan. San Antonio! Parker had 16 points to lead the team. Uh, Alana Beard was one assist, one of a double-double, but the Stars, they just came to play. It was very tight in the first half with L.A. basically in control the whole way, but then the Stars just broke away in the second half, and D-Rob led the team with 24 points, and the Sparks, they have had now three consecutive losses and have fallen to sixth place in the Western Conference. Then on Sunday, you had a bunch of great games. The day got started with a nationally televised game between the Lynx and Phoenix. The Lynx, they struggled offensively. Maya Moore would had a team high 14 points on the game. Dante, she had a double-double, 10 points, 12 rebounds. The Mercury win controlled the entire game. Four of their starters scored in double figures. Two players had double-doubles. Dupree had 18 points and 10 rebounds. Tarasi had 22 points and 11 assists. And Phoenix gives Minnesota the second straight loss. And now Phoenix is only half a game behind Minnesota. So now, regardless of what happens with Minnesota, Phoenix, if they win their next game, they will be in first place. And I'll explain more on that later. Then, back in New York for another battle against Connecticut, the Liberty, they had three starters in double figures. Pondexter led the way with 21 points, five assists. But despite Chene Agumake missing the game, uh, the Sun, all five of their starters scored in double figures. Uh, Douglas had a team high 14 points. Uh, Griffin fell one rebound short of a double double. As the Sun, they get their fourth straight win and climb into fourth place. So now they're in the playoffs. And the Liberty, they have their third straight loss and they remain dead last. Then, Tanisha Wright led the Storm with 24 points and they started the game off well. but. Behind 26 points from Skylar Diggins and double-doubles from both Courtney Paris and Gloria Johnson, the Shock, they were able to win a franchise record fourth straight game, and they are now back in the playoff picture, sitting out on the fourth seed. And then in the last game of the day, the, the Mystics, they had good effort from their guards. Lada and Hartley both started the game, combining for 25 points and 11 of the team's 18 assists. But it just wasn't enough to overcome the Atlanta team. They had four of their starters scoring double figures. McCartney and D'Souza both tied to lead the team with 16 points. D'Souza won rebound short of a double-double as the Dream grab another win and extend their lead on first place. So after all that excitement, here are the standings.
And you know what, taking a brief look at the standings, I mean, we're about a third of the way through the season and everything is still very wide open right now. Only one game separates the number two seed from the number five seed in the Eastern Conference and only one four game separates the number three seed in the West from the number six seed. So there are a few games that you can look forward to in the upcoming week. First of all, on Tuesday, you've got Indiana at Connecticut. Uh, both of these teams started the season horribly, but they both managed to turn that around with long winning streaks. Uh, they've been steadily climbing up in the standings. And so they've played each other twice already with the home team winning both times. And right now, I just see no reason for that to change. And then you've got another tough battle, Minnesota at Los Angeles. Uh, both of these teams, they started off, well, Minnesota started off 7-0, and and now they've lost three of the last four. Uh, <coughs> Los Angeles, however, is a little bit worse off. They've lost five of their last six. Either way, both of these teams are hoping to try and turn this around. The Sparks, however, their losing streak, they've lost three in a row now, and that started with a loss to Minnesota. And Minnesota, they're still in first place right now, only be, be, albeit only a half a game. But, like, the Sparks, they need to play desperate. I mean, this is a win that they need even more. You don't want to just keep losing and keep dropping in the standings, especially when you're already dead last. Then on Wednesday, the first game is Washington at Atlanta. This one's going to be on NBA TV at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Which, now that the finals are over, you're probably going to start seeing a lot more games being played on that, the national stage. So there's not as much going on in summer. You know, the Dream, they just beat the Mystics on Sunday. And they've been looking really great lately. So I just, I expect them to just keep this winning streak going for a little bit longer. Then you've got New York at Chicago, two strings that are two teams that are struggling very heavily. With Chicago, though, we know exactly what's wrong with them. They're, the core is just not intact right now. Sylvia Fowles, she had surgery back in March, and I have no idea when she'll return to action if she plays at all this year. And Elena Della Don, last I heard, she was going to be evaluated on Monday, which is today. As of recording this, I've heard no new news, but. You know, we'll see what, what happens with her. I wish her the best of luck. I hope you know, I hope that she's able to beat this thing and return to action. I really enjoy seeing her play. You know, her health is the number one concern, obviously. Either way, with Chicago, as soon as their roster is back healthy and 100% again, they'll be fine. New York, I don't know what the fuck's wrong with them. Then you've got Minnesota at Phoenix. Ding! Round two! And when I said that it doesn't matter what Minnesota does, the link, the Phoenix Mercury will get the first place with their next win. I meant that because Phoenix, even if they beat Los Angeles, there will be a total of one game in front of Phoenix in the standings. But then if Phoenix comes and they're able to win this game, then they get one win and Minnesota gets one loss. That's a one game swing. And Phoenix being 2-0 against Minnesota will then get first place in the standings. So regardless of what Minnesota does, Phoenix will be the number one seed if they win this game. But, but if Minnesota does manage to beat Los Angeles, then they will have a one game lead going into this game. So even if they did lose to Phoenix, it'll be a tie for first place with Phoenix owning the tiebreaker. By the way though, Minnesota is going to go in there planning on winning both of these games though. That's on Thursday, you've got two games, San Antonio at Seattle. Uh, these two teams, they're both fighting just to try to get above 500. San Antonio has been hanging on to that third seed basically the whole season. Uh, while Seattle, they've been struggling to find a rhythm and to just be winning consistently. But they're still playing well enough that they beat San Antonio the first time they mat matched up. Plus, Seattle, so far this season, they've been a much better home team than road team. They've had like 10 road games all year and 3 at home. That's all, that might also be part of the reason they struggled. And then you've got another DING round 2 as Tulsa goes into Los Angeles looking to continue their winning streak and keep Los Angeles losing. This game is going to air on ESPN2 at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this should be an exciting game. Tulsa, they barely beat the Sparks last time and so for Los Angeles, this can either be the game that turns their season back around and gets them back on track, or it'll be the game that just, it's a crushing defeat and 
and it'll just be a serious blow to their long-term season hopes. Me personally, I'm really hoping that Los Angeles wins this game and like gets into the playoffs again because they do not need another first round overall pick. They've already got Parker and Netka. They don't need help, okay? They're already good enough as it is. They don't need another first overall pick. Well, that's it for this edition of the WNBA Weekly. This has been the Fan Perspective. I'm your host, Nathan Lau. Tune in again on Friday for another onward edition of WNBA Weekly. And until then, I hope you enjoy your week. This one's for San Antonio, come on and raise up. Take your shirt off and twist it around your head, spin it like a helicopter. San Antonio, come on and raise up. This one's for you, uh-uh. This one's for who? Us, 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 I said, who we rap? San Antonio's for us.